so hello friends in our previous video we have discussed about the polycythic mafera and we have completed also the bleeding disorders we have started okay in that in this video particularly we are going to start with the causes of the thrombocytopenia in causes we have discussed in our previous video also but in detail we are going to discuss so we will discuss infection induced thrombocytopenia then drug induced thrombocytopenia like that okay so first uh, starting with here infection induced thrombocytopenia iit okay india infection induced thrombocytopenia so what is the pathogenesis of this so viral and bacterial infection resulting thrombocytopenia is the most common non iatrogenic cause of thrombocytopenia so this will be the mcq question also most common uh, cause of your non iatrogenic cause for the thrombocytopenia is your viral and bacterial infection so we will discuss every point which is given in your health okay so by viral and bacterial infection is the most common cause for non iatrogenic thrombocytopenia okay now one point i need to mention here that is hiv associated sorry hiv associated thrombocytopenia because this is very important okay hiv associated thrombocytopenia so in hiv okay this uh, virus increases your platelet destruction okay platelet destruction is increased along with impaired platelet production okay so this two this two will lead to thrombocytopenia so hiv virus causes increased platelet destruction and causes impaired platelet production clear and one more thing i need to mention here that is cd4 and cx cr4 these are the receptor and co receptor receptor okay this is the receptor cd4 cd4 is the receptor and cx cr4 is the co receptor okay for hiv okay and these are the found these two cd4 and cx cr4 is found on platelet mega karyocytes okay these are found on mega karyocytes getting taking a new slide okay so cd4 is your receptor and this cx cr4 is the co-receptor and these two is present on mega karyocyte and these are the co-receptors for the co-receptor and co-receptor for the mega karyocytes for the hiv virus okay and so so by binding to this receptor, HIV virus will enter into mega karyocyte. Okay, and and this receptor basically allowing these cells to be infected. Clear? One more thing that HIV infection also lead to B cell hyperplasia. Okay, HIV infection also lead to B cell hyperplasia, and that will increase auto antibody. Okay, to platelets. So these are the two basic mechanisms proposed. That is, with the help of CD4 and CXCR4, they are entering into the megakaryocytes. And one more, that HIV infection causes B cell hyperplasia. So it will increase auto antibody formation against the platelet, and that will lead to thrombocytopenia. So this is the pathogenesis for the infection induced thrombocytopenia. Okay. Now we are moving for the most important part. That is your drug induced thrombocytopenia. Okay. That is the most important part. And several time questions are asked for me. That drug induced thrombocytopenia so first we will discuss what are the drugs according to Heisen's so uh, a long list is given okay so starting with the first that is cunidine then your cunidine cunidine then cunidine your then vancomycin okay then your obsiximab we will discuss important properties also along with the special drugs okay then your acetaminophen then Amiodarone, okay, then your amino salicylic acid, amino salicylic acid, then the most important ampicillin, then your carbamazepine, okay, carbamazepine, that is anti, one of the anti drug, then your chlor, propamide, then captopril, very important, okay, then your diclofenac, so diclofenac. Then cimetidine, then your digoxin is very important from the MCQ point of view. Along with this, there are other many drugs such as dipyetamol, eptifibatid, ethambutol, okay, uh, fluconazole. These are the other drugs which are also causing your uh, drug induced thrombocytopenia. The list is also including your furosemide, then gliburide, which is uh, used in diabetes, okay, then gold. Then your hydrochlorothiazide, then ibuprofen, levamisole, one more important that is linezolid. Okay, 
then methicillin methyl dopa is also important then your propanamide is also very important drug okay then valproic acid so these are the drugs it continue it contains more uh, 10 to 15 drugs more okay i'm not uh, going for that you can uh, note down from the Harrison book okay so these are the main group of drugs which are responsible for the drug induced thrombocytopenia okay now we'll discuss the pathogenesis how it is occurring so first point that classical drug dependent antibody are antibody that react with the specific protected surface antigen okay so uh, and that and that, and that antibody react with the surface antigen of the protected and results in destruction of the protected and causing thrombocytopenia okay so the first is your classical drug dependent antibody so what is the classical drug dependent so they are the antibody that react with the specific protected surface antigen and that will result that will result in thrombocytopenia only when the drug is present okay thrombocytopenia occurs only when drug is present okay this is known as classical drug dependent antibody formation and this is this type is most commonly seen with your tunin and sulfonamides okay this is important MC portion this is commonly seen in tunin and sulfonamide thrombocytopenia typically occurs after a period of initial exposure of your 21 days initial exposure 21 days or upon re-exposure within 7 to 10 days okay now next point that is thrombocytopenia caused by platelet glycoprotein 2b 3a inhibitory drugs such as apsiximab such as your apsiximab it appears within 24 hours of exposure so we have discussed it i will tell some important point about some drugs okay so in apsiximab the thrombocytopenia will occur within the 24 hours now one more important point here we are going to discuss is that heparin induced thrombocytopenia that is the most important okay heparin induced thrombocytopenia in thrombocytopenia drug induced thrombocytopenia this heparin induced thrombocytopenia is the most important one so drug induced thrombocytopenia due to heparin differs from that with the other drugs in two ways okay there are two differences between the uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia and other drugs induced thrombocytopenia what are the two differences so the first is your that is thrombocytopenia is not usually severe here okay it is not in severe form in heparin induced thrombocytopenia the second difference that heparin induced thrombocytopenia is not associated with bleeding okay it is not associated with bleeding in fact it, it causes increased risk of your thrombosis so this is very important point okay it increases the chances of thrombosis it does not cause bleeding so there are two differences the first is thrombocytopenia is not usually severe the second is that it does not increase bleeding chances it causes increased chances of the thrombosis clear now this heparin induced thrombocytopenia is again divided into two types that is type 1 and the second is your type 2 okay type 1 occurs rapidly after onset of therapy and resolved despite continuous of the therapy okay this is not a type 1 it occurs rapidly after onset of therapy and it resolved despite continuous of the therapy the type 2 is that uh, is type 2 type 2 antibody forms against heparin platelet 4 complex okay so this is the platelet this is the platelet 4 factor ef 4 okay and heparin will come and form complex with this and antibody will form against this complex heparin pf4 complex and that will lead to activation of platelet through your fc gamma r2 receptor remember this okay this receptor and also activate monocyte and endothelial cell so this is the type 2 heparin induced thrombocytopenia okay and this heparin induced thrombocytopenia occurs after exposure to uh, low molecular weight heparin as well as Unfraction heparin, okay, that is also known as UMH. Unfraction heparin, I'm not going to write the photo. Unfraction heparin, and this unfraction heparin, this UFH is 10 times more commonly used. So, this is another important MCU okay. So, this is your um, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. Now, what is the next point? It is four T's for the uh, diagnosis of heparin induced thrombocytopenia. This is very important. Okay, as is mentioned, the four T concept. For the diagnosis of thrombocytopenia, heparin induced thrombocytopenia. The first is your, the first thing is simple, that is thrombocytopenia. No problem. Okay, the first is simple, that is thrombocytopenia. The second is the timing of platelet count drop. The timing of the platelet count drop. The third thing is thrombosis, and the fourth 
is for this listing. Another cause of thrombocytopenia. These are the four D which are essential for the diagnosis of the HIT. Clear? Okay. Now, uh, suppose this is the zeroth, this is the fifth, and this is the fourteenth. This is the days. Okay. So risk of HIT is within this risk of hepatitis thrombocytopenia. In this hepatitis thrombocytopenia can occur only if hepatitis is used in last hundred days. Okay. Within zero to five days, it can occur, but uh, only if hepatitis is used in last hundred days. And uh, here, delayed onset HIT, which occurs rarely. Okay, delayed onset HIT, which occurs rarely. Most of the common is here within five to fourteen days. Clear? Now coming to the lab diagnosis of the this. Okay, so what is the lab diagnosis for this? So the first is hepatitis thrombocytopenia. That is, uh, we can tell hepatitis thrombocytopenia antibody can be detected. Okay. So we we'll take happy induced thrombocytopenia antibody. Happy induced thrombocytopenia antibody means it means anti heparin platelet four antibody. Okay, you can take so happy induced thrombocytopenia antibody can be detected, and this is detected basically by two assays. Okay, what are those? So the first is your ELISA with PF four polyanion. Complex as antigen. Okay, ELISA with PF4 polyline complex as antigen, and the second is your platelet. So, second is your platelet activation assay. So, the first is your ELISA with PF4 polyline complex as antigen, and the second one is your platelet activation assay. So, these are the two method by which you can detect antibody. So, what is in this? So, it has. Sorry, it has. Low specificity. Okay, for the diagnosis of HIT, since many patients develop antibody but don't develop HIT. Example, cardiopulmonary bypass surgery, under one percent patient. Okay, develop this antibody post-operatively. So these are not specific. Clear? This point is very important. Cardiopulmonary bypass surgery under one patient develop this antibody post-operatively. Fifty or two percent, fifty percent of the patient, despite the absence of HIT. Okay. Now this platelet activation is it. Its sensitivity. Is lower, but it is more specific. Okay, it is more specific, and this assay measures the ability of patient zero to activate platelets in presence of hepatitis. Clear? So these are the two assays. And the first assay is direct direction of the antibodies, and in in that we are performing the two basic assays. Okay, ELISA with PF four polyanion complex and platelet activation assay. Now, what is the treatment for this? So patient diagnosed with HIT. Okay, imaging studies to evaluate the patient for thrombosis are recommended. So the first, uh, you should uh, at least lower, at least Hudson is telling that at least lower extremity duplex dopplers. At least lower extremities duplex dopplers are recommended for the patient. Okay. Now, patient require anticoagulant should be switched from heparin to an alternative coagulant. Okay, if patient. We require anticoagulant. Then you have to switch from heparin to other alternative anticoagulant. Then direct thrombin inhibitors are effective in HIT, such as your ergotrovin, ergotrovin. Then you can use lepirudine. Okay, so these two drugs are also given: ergotrovin and lepirudine. Then DTI, such as your direct thrombin inhibitors, such as your bevacizumab. Okay. And one anti-thrombin binding pentasaccharide, which is known as Fonda Pentax, are also effective. Okay, it is also effective, but uh, it is not approved by FDA. These two drugs, but these are also effective. Then the next is your Dena Pyruvate. Okay, mixture of glycosamine glycans with anti-TNA activity, so it can also use. Then in patient with thrombosis, suppose if the patient is with thrombosis, then The patient is transmitted, and the patient is transitioned to sorry warfarin. The patient is transitioned to warfarin with treatment usually for three to six months. Okay, and in patient without thrombosis, anticoagulant is given for certain duration about one month. So this is a uh, strategy for the treatment of the patient. Okay.
Okay. So this is about doing this tomb side opinion and fixing this tomb side opinion. In next video we will discuss about immune tomb side opinion called Julian Tiger. Okay, so thank you for watching this video.